Hey artists, well today we have a special guest um, here with us. Her name is MK and she is a printmaker in New York. So I have several questions to ask her. But before I do that, we're just going to let her kind of take it away for a few minutes and share with us what it's like to be a printmaker in New York. MK, take it away. Hi guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Hardin. Um, so guys, um, being a full-time artist in New York is a very awesome experience to get to be creative every day for work. And especially living in a city that's as big and as exciting as New York, there's always inspiration everywhere. It can also be tough um, making art full-time um, because sometimes you make something really cool, and if someone else doesn't like it, it feels like your feelings are hurt. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily um, have to be that way all the time. A lot of times people do like what you make. I think that's one of the hardest things about being an artist. Um, I think the best thing about being an artist is to get to express yourself every day through your work. And sometimes you have happy expressions and sometimes you have sad expressions and sometimes you have mad expressions and you're just, oh, I, I get black paint and I just go slash, 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 slash on a piece of paper and just make something really spooky and, and scary to make it to seem how I feel on the inside or I'll make it very glittery and pink if it's very a happy day. So I think that that's the best part about being an artist in general, no matter what city you live in. And uh, New York just makes it all the more fun because it's just such an exciting place to be. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, well, um, as you know, I've told you my students are first grade through fifth grade, and so they're young artists, and they've heard my Yay. story about being an artist since the first grade, but we're curious how long you have been an artist. Well, I've been an artist almost since the first grade as well. Um, I started at a private school, a private art school called the Charlotte Jones School of Art, which was um, a wonderful um, place in my hometown that gave after school art classes to kids grades one through 10, I think it was. And I went to that school till I was too old to go. And every year I learned a different um, technique. I focused on a different class and I learned how to throw pottery on a wheel. I learned how to weave on a loom as well as I also learned how to um, uh, do all kinds of other techniques with painting and, and other mediums. So I guess I could say I've been an artist my whole life. Um, and then in New York City, uh, as an adult, I've been a full-time practicing artist for about two years. So Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so talk to us about, do a little rewind in your brain and talk to us about what you remember about elementary school. Did you have art in your elementary school? You know what? <laughs> I don't think that I did, to be honest with you. And I almost called my mother today because I was thinking, I don't think that they taught art in my elementary school. And I'm pretty certain they, I didn't take an art class at my school until I got to junior high school. Mm -hmm. Um. What I do remember about the private art school that I went to, Charlotte Jones, after school, um, some of the techniques that I learned during that time in my life, I still use today. And mm -hmm. like, even the things that we learned that I didn't like, I can still remember that, oh, I didn't like that. And I wasn't, that didn't really resonate with me. So I don't have to go back and try that again. Or maybe I can go try back and try that again. Maybe it's changed. Um, but I still have very, very, fond memories of the things that I did then, and I can apply it uh, to what I do now. So it's kind of weird how that never really leaves you. And it's not, it, it's not like you can do it just perfect the first time you try, but you start and you think, oh yeah, I do remember how this works. So I, cool. I do remember it fondly. Yeah. <laughs> well, artist, that just shows you that you're really lucky to have art in your elementary school. And I was lucky too. For sure. Because I know a lot of my friends growing up did not have art in their elementary school, so it's a blessing. There you go. It All right, is, MK, it is. tell us how did you decide to be a printmaker in New York? Okay, well, this is kind of a weird story, but um, I decided I wanted to make a poster, and it had a message on it that was really important to me, and it's like, it's like a movie poster, you know, artists, when you go out and about and you see a poster for a movie or a street sign that gets your attention. I wanted to make something like that, but I didn't know how to make it. And I thought to myself, 
how can I make this piece of art that's, I want it to be beautiful, I want it to be creative, I want it to be my own uh, true expression, and um, I want it I want to be able to make multiple copies of it because I'm going to give it to all my friends mm -hmm. and make sure that everyone that I know has this. So uh, I started um, researching this because it was so important to me and I discovered screen printing, mm -hmm. which I had never screen printed before and I decided I was going to take a class. So I took a screen printing class and it's screen printing is just so ah. so uh, I took a class and I learned that screen printing is not easy and that it takes a lot of dedication a lot of planning and a lot of practicing so I took a class for four weeks and then after that I started planning and I started practicing and I started really figuring out how I was going to make this piece of art and that artist is how I got introduced into the world of printmaking is just because I simply had the desire to make something so much myself as that I was just going to figure out how to do it. And I did. I love it. I love that you said dedicated and practice because that's something that we definitely do in our art studio is practice, practice, practice. Those are big ones. It takes a long and, time um, to really get it right. It does take a long time <laughs> to get it right. But when you do, it's like, ah, and you have that and you know that you worked for it and um, I can show you guys what I made actually so this is the poster that I made there you go yeah and that's all screen printed um, four colors plus a half tone picture so that's what I made and a lot of people in New York have seen that art. Yay! So, uh, yeah, so I've, I've I've really had a lot of a lot of fan base and a lot of people that have come to know that that's my artwork. Mm. So that's also another um, good result of the dedication and the patience and the practicing. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So what are you working on right now? Okay. So right now I'm working on a monoprint series, mm. which I've heard that you guys have been working on monoprints. We have been. We've learned all about monoprints. Yes. I love monoprints because they only happen once. And unlike screen printing where you can make 25, 100, you can just make, 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 make as long as your little hands can go. But in monotype, I love how you just make one, and it's just this beautiful, unique piece, and um, that's that's what you have. So I've been, um, I uh, used to work in the fashion industry, so I'm very inspired by fashion, and I like to go through fashion magazines like Vogue or any kind of magazine. I love to rip out the beautiful pictures, and I use those with my mono prints uh, by taking things from those magazine pictures that I really like and making those shapes with my ink and my paint in the mono print. Mm. Um, it's still very abstract, but to me that really inspires me and I love to do it because I really never know how it's going to turn out after you press the plexiglass to the paper. Um, now, how have you guys been doing yours? Have you been wetting the paper and using markers? Yes. Yeah, so for first and second grade, they've been using a, a foam printing plate where they imprint Ooh. their design with pens in one color and then a second color to get a really deep imprint Ooh. and then they color it oh, excuse me we don't color in printing we ink we ink our plate yeah we <laughs> inked our plate with markers and then they came back to the printing table and I sprayed a little piece of water and they put their plate on top of um, the paper and then you know massaged it and then took a little sneak peek if they wanted to and then pulled the oh, paper wow. off and it was great. And then my third and fourth graders are starting a series next week using jelly prints. Oh, uh, jelly I've plates. seen that, but yeah. I've never done that. Me either. It's very new to me, but we're going to all try it together next week and see what happens. That's so cool. Yeah. I use a piece of plexiglass, <clears throat> and it's clear. So I can see, excuse me, mm -hmm. so I can see the magazine picture underneath the plexiglass, and mm -hmm. I just put the plexi, and I start to draw with the ink and I start to make the design. Um, and it's pretty clear, but then when the paper marries the, the plexiglass, all the ink kind of 
does its own little thing and I put it through an etching press and it flattens it down really hard so when the print is revealed there's just a hint of what was on the fashion magazine whether mm. it's like a outline of a shoe or something a blonde hair anything it's very very vague so um I'm going to be doing a series of probably about 20 of those um which are all lined up at my studio right now waiting to be executed um so that's what I'm working on currently well cool okay speaking yeah. of your studio I showed our students the video of your studio before we're watching this one now. Um, anything you want to tell us about your studio and how that works or how you found it or what's your favorite part? Yeah, or... yeah sure. <laughs> okay, so mm, here in New York, um, we don't have a lot of space. Everything is really tiny. Um, so a lot of artist studios are shared spaces where lots of artists can come together and pay just a little bit of money to share a big open space. So that way it's better for your budget and also you can uh, really network and interact with other artists and kind of see what they're working on. And it's a great environment um, because there's been a lot of times where I needed help, where I got stuck and there was something I didn't know how to do and I was able to ask a fellow mm -hmm. artist, um, hey, I'm, I'm stuck. What? Uh? So it's a great way of... Um, not only getting helped with your work, but also helping people with your work. Cool. Um, I have a couple of different studio experiences. So there's a studio that's in Brooklyn by where I live, and it's for screen printers, and that's where I do most of my work. But this month, I received a scholarship to a new studio um, that's in the city in Manhattan uh, to do monotypes. Oh, because, yeah. yeah, so it's two different types of equipment. Um, that we use to do the monotype versus the screen printing. And screen printing, it's a little bit more, so it's just completely different. And a monotype uh, requires like a cleaner environment and like a, you need etching presses and special inks and all kinds of things. So um, when I found out that there was a scholarship available at the studio, I applied for it. And I applied for it twice before and I did not get it. But this time I did. So, um, you know, a, I gotta say, artists, when it comes to the art, when it comes to making art, really dedication and perseverance and just keep going is just such a huge key. So anyway, the third time was the charm for me and I got, I got a scholarship. So I've been able to work there. And then next month, although I will be paying for the space, I still have an opportunity to continue to work there mm -hmm. to finish the series. So, um, that's how most artists work in the city. We share yeah. studios and we share space and sometimes we share paint. It just depends. So <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really, really, really cool. I'm like very grateful to have met the people that I've met and had those experiences. Good. Let me clarify really quick because some of my younger kiddos won't understand scholarship. So boys and girls, right. a scholarship is where someone pays you money to go do something. So MK mm -hmm. found this monoprint studio where she is, um, someone is paying her way to go and be able to work in that studio. So yeah. that's what a yeah. scholarship is. And you guys will learn mm -hmm. more about that when you get older too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last thing, what advice would you give to any kid that wants to grow up and do what you're doing? Okay, um, this, this is a good question. Uh, because... My advice to any kid who wants to be a full-time artist is to always keep that dream very close to your heart and always keep going and always finding a way to keep the art in your life. Um, some of you are going to grow up and you're going to decide that maybe you're not going to be an artist full-time. Maybe you're going to be a doctor or an accountant or a teacher. but there's always a way to keep art within your life and to keep that creativity because art always comes from your heart and from like the, the very goodness inside of you. So you shouldn't ever give that up no matter what your job is. Like you should always find time to create. Um, I was in a career for, for a long time in my life before I decided to start making art full time. And during that time in my career, I also found ways to use art in my everyday life. So I would say for those that maybe aren't going to be artists forever, always keep it in your life. And for those of you that really want to keep art as your full-time uh, main career, is to keep at it. 
and to believe in yourself and 